when can we use Feynman's technique legitimately? Meaning, when can we legitimately switch the order of differentiation and in integration? So, for example, we're given a definite integral from a to b f of x and u double variable function dx denoted as phi of u, a function of u. So there is a sufficient condition. If f of x and u is a double variable, variable function and partial f partial u of x and u also as a double variable function are both continuous over this rectangle a, b and alpha, beta. Then we can actually switch the order, meaning we can first of all do the integration, then do the differentiation phi dash of u. We will have the same result as if we first do the differentiation inside partial f partial u, then we do the integration outside from a to b with respect to x. And first of all, I'll denote this definite integration from a to b as a function of u g of u. Of course, that's uh, different, different from phi of u, but also a function of u. So here's the proof. First of all, I'm going to have a look at phi of u plus h minus phi of u over h. I'm going to see if as h approaches zero, does there exist a limit? Of course, I cannot write down limit just yet, but let's find out. So that is equal to h integral from a to b, f of x and u plus h minus f of x and u dx. So first of all, let's look at integrand f of x and u plus h minus f of x and u. So I claim it to be the definite int integral from u to u plus h of partial f partial v of x and v dv. The reason is because the indefinite integral of partial f partial v of x and v dv is simply, uh, the antiderivative is simply f of x and v, right? That's before we differentiate with respect to v plus a constant. So if it's a definite integral, then we just have to simply replace replace v with the upper bound and v with the lower bound and take their difference and c will be gone, right? So that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? v replaced upper bound, v replaced lower bound, take their difference, being the definite integral version, right? So that's why. So now it can be written as h at the bottom, integral from a to b, bracket, integral from u to u plus h of partial f partial v of x and v dv bracket dx. Now, because the integrand partial f partial v as a double variable function is given to be continuous over this rectangle, therefore according to the well-known theorem in double integration, we can legitimately switch the order of integration in this case. Right, that is equal to h integral from u to u plus h bracket integral from a to b partial f partial v of x and v 
dx than dv. Now, I'm going to this time denote the integral from a to b as integral from a to b partial f partial v of x and v dx. Also, this is a function of uh, v. Remember, I denoted integral from a to b partial f partial u as g of u. So now this is partial f partial v. So just replace u with, with v. So simply g of v. Right. So it can be easily written as h at the bottom integral from u to u plus h of g of v dv right that's the uh, integral with respect to v now this looks something familiar right fundamental theorem of calculus as h approaches zero so i've just established that this expression can be written as the following expression, where g of v is actually represents uh, this expression, uh, just changing the u to v, right? Similar stuff. Now, this looks like something very familiar. All right, if we just look at the, in fact, if we just look at the changing upper bound integral, right? Fixed lower bound alpha, changing upper bound u of uh, g of uh, v dv. Again, this is a function of u because upper bound u is changing, right? Function of u denoted, uh, denoted as capital F of u. Do we know that the integrand is continuous? g of u, a g of v. Uh, one thing we know is that this integrand, partial f partial v, is given to be continuous. And according to another theorem, if the integrand is continuous as a double variable over a rectangle, then if we take the uh, definite integral, this function is also continuous. I'll prove this theorem in a future video. But first, let's, uh, let's just use this theorem. So in fact, yes, this whole function is also continuous. So according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, integrand is continuous. Then we easily have f dash of u, right? Derivative with respect to u is easily the inside function, integrand, v replaced with u, g of u. Right. In fact, it can be also, also be written as the limit of as h approach 0, the very or, original definition, right, over h integral from alpha to u plus h minus the integral from alpha to u. Right? So the graph looks like something like this. This is alpha. This is beta. Uh, right. So this graph is the graph of function function g u is somewhere here u plus h is here for example then the integral from alpha to u plus h is the area under the curve from this point 
up to this point, right? It's this area. And the integral from alpha to u is the area under the curve from this point to this point. That's this area. What's their difference? Their difference is easily the area of this part. All right? The area of this part is easily Right? Their difference is easily the area of this. The area of this part is easily the integral from u to u plus h. u to u plus h. Alright, then we divide by h. Let h e approach 0. Same thing, right? Same as f dash u, right? Just the derivative. Look at this expression, right? Integral from u to u plus h over h of g. Same thing, right? Let me just denote it as uh, this. Approaches uh, g of u as uh, h approaches 0, just to be rigorous. Right. Alternatively, we can rewrite it into, rewrite this whole expression into, so the limit of, as h approaches 0, of this ex expression, right? Let me just rewrite it into the limit as h approaches 0 of this expression. h at the bottom, phi of u plus h minus phi of u is actually to equal to g of u. All right. So uh, this is exactly the very definition of the derivative uh, of the function phi of u at point u. Right. So this is exactly phi dash of u. equals g u, g of u. I've proven. So I've really proven phi dash of u really is equal to g of u, 